Welcome back, everyone. Issues of Faith. We are talking about dating in this modern age. We have with us uh, Kyle and Kelsey Pecky. They've just written a new book, The Chase, Trusting God with Your Happily Ever After. And, and every generation, it seems to me, thinks, probably appropriately, that dating has gotten progressively harder, that they are dating in the most difficult time. And, and when you look again at all the modern stuff going on in the social media, that kind of thing, I think that's appropriate. So what can we, what are some old fashioned values that, that people should look to in this modern age that really do work in your opinion? Totally. For us, we just go to the Bible and just, uh, we love in First Peter how it says that we can give our worries and cares to God. And it's a beautiful reminder that God cares about our love life. He mm -hmm. cares about the things that we care about. And so looking to that, I know for me as a guy, it's, the Bible has really taught me how to uh, love a woman, how to respect her, and how to really take that first step and pursue her and chase after her. I know for me, it's unattractive if a girl is being really, really forward or really, really um, doing the leading or pursuing or talking about marriage first or really kind of putting the pressure on. I know for me as the guy, I take a few, I take a few steps back because I feel like I can't lead. So I think for, if some girls can realize, you know what, maybe I should let the guy lead the relationship a little bit, you know what I mean? Obviously protect yourself, don't let a guy lead you down a wrong path, of course. But give him room to grow and lead, and when you do that, you might see, oh, this is the guy I want to be with, or this isn't the guy because he's not, he's not moving us anywhere. We're not going any direction. So if you're with a guy who's really leading you in a positive way, you can trust him compared to letting a guy not lead and seeing, you know what, this isn't, this isn't the relationship for me. Because I think if a girl takes too much control, she misses the chance to see whether or not this is the guy who can lead her or not. Mm -hmm. Which again is a, a different message than you would hear sometimes. It's the, very counterculture. The, you know, <laughs> the girl is responsible for her own happiness and why should she just sit around and wait by the phone totally. and, mm -hmm. and you know, take, take control of your life. And, and I think to some extent there's, there's some value in that, but have, where, where yeah. do you think we are in society now? Yeah, so what I would say what I would say to that is that I, I love I love working hard. I have I have my own goals and dreams that I do, of like away from Kyle, you know. So I would say to that girl, keep doing what you do. I mean, be strong and be confident in who you are. You don't you don't need a guy to complete you at all. I mean, really, for me. God is the one that actually completes me and God brought our love story together and I'm so so thankful but that might not be everyone's story you know and in in our book the chase I kind of encourage girls to fill your days with goals and dreams and ambitions and I mean each each girl or guy knows what they want to accomplish in life and so for me I'm really big on writing down your goals and so I think I think when you have a plan and you work hard that that's also attractive too so even though you want the guy to lead, you don't have to just sit at home and look out the window. You can still be doing things that you want to do and you want to pursue and dreams and passions. Um, but I think really just being secure and, okay, God, you are my identity and then what do I need to do? And, and in that, I think that you'll find that I think the most beautiful love is when the guy can lead, not in this dominating way that doesn't let you do anything, but in this way that really like shows true love. I mean, really, that's just kind of how I feel, and that's that's what I've seen with other other couples where they've shared their love story with us, and it was the guy totally leading and totally pursuing, you know. And um, I I think even though that's kind of a lost art, I think I think that's really really important, and it really does like speak a lot about the guy, and it just helps your heart as the girl knowing that he can lead you somewhere. So that is a nice word, art, um, because it can be taken too far and, yeah. and be looked at as a negative, and there may be people again or parents who want to give advice. Um, you know, I guess you did it successfully. <laughs> you know what? It, what and and how, what is appropriate when when you're saying the guy take the lead? Yeah. The guy, you know, at what point it, is it up to the woman to respond and reciprocate? And, and I guess yeah. what what is appropriate in that yeah. whole art? Yeah, totally. Say. Yeah. I think the, in the beginning with like texts or calls, I think let him kind of lead that. You, a girl can absolutely text or call a guy, but I'd let him do more of that in the beginning. 
just to see if he's really serious about this because sometimes we can force relationships and it can lead to heartbreak. So if we know if someone's really serious, then the door can be open to more of a depth. And I think later on, as the guy's leading more, I mean, the Bible talks about how when a guy leads, he does it sacrificially and it's by putting the girl first. So when a guy is putting you first, when he's giving up something for you and leading you so beautifully, that's what leading looks like. It doesn't look like dominating or be like, we're doing it this way or that way. It's by sacrifice and that's what it really should look like and I totally agree with that I think I think that as the girl that you should play hard to get so if if a guy sends you a text maybe wait an hour maybe you're busy and then an hour goes by and you're like oh I'm gonna text him back so you can definitely text the guy back because the guys need to know if you're interested we or gotta not. know that there's some signals yeah. going on you yeah know? <laughs> but you know I mean rather than jumping on right away and it's like five minutes after and then you kind of pour out your heart and then the guy sends like a one-word text you're kind of feeling it out there you know totally. like you're like I'm not really sure so I think trying to like play it cool and playing hard to get it's, it's really also about fun too. Guarding your heart, you mm -hmm. know, and so you don't have to get so heartbroken. Right. I think if you if you take it slow and yep. see see where it goes, there's less heartbreak. So as I said earlier, every generation thinks that theirs is the toughest to date in. Yeah. And and I think they probably have gotten progressively harder. You all are married, have a little baby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you think going the next generation? <laughs> I mean, it seems so difficult now, yeah. and I'm so far removed, but it seems so difficult. Where where are we headed, do mm -hmm. you think? It's going to get crazy. Yeah. I think it's just going to get really crazy. I think relationships and family, um, there might be some breakdown of that in society, which would be very sad. But I think the people who really hold on to a deep, real connection, talking face-to-face, -face, talking on the phone, and getting past Twitter and just an online profile are gonna have the really um, beautiful love and depth. Yeah. I think a lot of people are gonna miss that as we get really tech-savvy, and as we get to a place where you really can do everything from your couch, and not have to get out of your house, you know? Mm -hmm. But I think we're not created to be like that. I think we're created for community and relationships. And I totally agree with that. And I think, I think honestly, it, it does come down with trusting God with your happily ever after. And that's our tagline for our book. You know, the chase that in generations to come, that it's like, it really does come down to faith. And it's like, do you, do you trust God with your life? And you might not, but for us, we have found that when we put our hope and our trust in God, yeah. that He just lays out a plan better than we could have ever even imagined. And that's, that's not us being fake or saying, I mean, that, that's just what we've experienced from God's love in our life and with our love story certainly so for the younger generation is marriage the goal I mean and do you see marriage remaining kind of the the standard um, that it is today and we've, we've heard maybe fewer people are getting married or they're getting married later you know what do you, what do you see again going forward for that institution yeah yeah I think marriage shouldn't ever be the goal. I think the goal should be really chasing after God and going on the plans that He has for you. And if marriage is that, then that's wonderful and He'll bring that around. But I think it shouldn't necessarily be the goal right from the start because you can get disappointed and you can try to force things or even take things too fast. But if the goal is to chase God first and go where He leads, then hopefully that'll be a wonderful byproduct of that. It'll be for some people, it won't be for everybody, but I think it'll be for a lot of people. And do you think it is the kind of way where this generation aspires as, as much as the past generation? I mean, is that institution um, going to stay with us, its future? What do you, what do you think you in know, our final think, minute? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, think, I think in the uh, Christian circles, I think that that still is very much the end goal. And again, like what Kyle said, I would tell girls just to take a deep breath and to really, really find your identity in God and really just chase after Him. and just putting your trust about your future, your happily ever after in God. Because I think I think a lot of our fans do want marriage and do want totally. that. And, and I think that's absolutely beautiful. But you have to be whole as yourself, single first, before you can even enter into anything like that. And so I think, I think really just trust in God and then whatever He brings. If it's marriage or if it's not, life is just more exciting when you don't have to do it on your own, you know. Well, it's a fascinating conversation. Thank you all mm -hmm. for being open for Thank you. about this. Thank you. Kyle and Kelsey Kopecki with their new book, The Chase, uh, Trusting God with Your Happily Ever After. Thanks to all of you for watching Issues of Faith. Have a great day, everybody.